Now, Europe is bracing for former President Donald Trump's potential return to power, even as his Democratic rival, Vice President Kamala Harris, remains a mostly unknown quantity. Many Europeans believe much is at stake in the nail-biting U.S. elections, from NATO and the transatlantic alliance to Russia's war on Ukraine, trade relations and the future of their own democracies. Many Europeans do not have fond memories of Donald Trump's presidency. Here in France, an initially friendly relationship between President Macron and his U.S. counterpart soon cooled. Europe-U.S. tensions grew over trade, Iran and climate change, and Trump's allegedly transactional approach to the NATO alliance. If he returns to power, Trump says he'll impose steep tariffs on Europe, seek a negotiated end to Russia's war in Ukraine, and cut U.S. support to Kyiv, positions most European leaders strongly oppose. There is a sense that he's older, meaner, more radical, and more dangerous. There is, of course, the future of Europe, the future of NATO, the protection, the solidarity facing Russia. European Union leaders are reportedly preparing ways to cushion the potential impact of another Trump presidency. But across Europe, people are worried. Trump scares us because he expresses hate, he lies, and we feel he has the stature of a despot, a dictator. Analysts say Europeans are largely rooting for U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris, the Democratic candidate, who they hope will continue the strong transatlantic ties under current President Joe Biden. Analysts suggest those ties may weaken, regardless of who's next in the White House, as American priorities shift elsewhere. I think um, a Harris victory would um, generate big relief in Europe. Um, we have also seen that Harris campaign was not really about the substance, um, particularly when it comes to foreign policy. So, um, of course, she remains to some extent a surprise box for many Europeans. For his part, Trump can still count on some strong European fans. Hungary's Viktor Orban says he'll open champagne if Trump wins. Trump's nationalist, tough-on-immigration themes also resonate among Europe's populist hard-right parties. I'm worried about democracy because if Trump wins this election, it's, it's going to be like a domino effect on Europe. Some analysts believe another Trump presidency may be a wake-up call for Europe to beef up its own military and economic defenses, a move critics say the bloc should have done years ago. Lisa Bryant, VOA News, Paris. Now, as we edge even closer to the polls, I am now joined by Dr. Telela Netani Viga from the Witt School of Governance. Dr. Netani Viga, thank you so much for joining us this evening. And I guess, you know, it's only a couple of days left. It's crunch time. The whole world is watching um, on the edge of their seats to see who will win the U.S. elections. But it's largely been described as neck and neck. Yes. A good evening, Mesa, and all the viewers of uh, Newsroom Africa. Indeed, it's a very close, really razor-thin race, and nail-biting even, and, and for obvious reasons, because this, the political landscape in the United States uh, is really heightened, both emotionally, but also on issues that are before the table. So I think even within the next two, three days, before Tuesday is still going to be this tight. Yes. And one is a bit cautious when it comes to polls as well. We've also seen how polls can sometimes get it dismally wrong as well. But looking at the polls as well, they're also showing that picture of a, a bit of a neck and neck, um, quite a close race as well. So it's very up in the air, very much up in the air as to who would win these upcoming elections. But when we're looking at the swing states, do we get a bit of an idea as to where it could possibly swing? It's very difficult. I mean, if you're looking, for instance, at, at, at Michigan, Wisconsin, it's some uh, uh, posters are, are giving it about 3% at, uh, at Harris lead advantage to Trump. But then there are critical uh, swing states, battleground states like Georgia, and Harris is there today, Nevada, 
and uh, uh, Shapiro State, so in North Carolina also. So it's still really, really neck and neck. And one of the reasons I think the pollsters are very careful, remember the past two elections, especially that really upset of uh, 2016 Trump election um, uh, candidate Trump uh, versus Hillary Clinton. They were getting wrong most mm. of the time. So get a sense of caution on their side because the error of margin is uh, is around 4% or so. And it's neck and neck 47, 48, 43, 45. So there's sort of a, a particular trend. So it's two things. One, it's a very closely contested race, but also you've got pollsters who are also uh, incredibly careful not to project what it may be not or, or not, you know, that kind of thing. So so the, the critical five battleground states are, are will decide the, the election, as you know, that in the U.S. is that 270 electoral college. So those states are incredible critical. So no wonder you see both candidates the past few days are there. I mean, Trump is in North Carolina today, and I think tomorrow so he's going to be in Georgia, and, 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 and it's Michigan, it's North Carolina, it's Nevada, it's, you know, so you can see the effort they are putting on the critical uh, uh, battleground states. Looking at the different messaging and the different kinds of support that the two presidential candidates have gotten, when we're looking at Kamala Harris, for instance, the world of music, arts and culture has really endorsed her, where we see the likes of Beyonce, um, Megan Thee Stallion and, and the likes, just a lot of artists who have backed her, Jennifer Lopez. And then looking at the messaging around what Trump has been saying, focusing on immigration, focusing on things like um, Harris's race. And I mean, his last speech, he mentioned that she's a low IQ person. Would you think that the race wouldn't be this tight, that it would be a little bit more obvious of who is in the lead and not in the lead, just looking at their messaging? Yes. Well, there, there are a couple of issues there, Masa, and I agree with you. One, Harris didn't go through the traditional way of, of earning the vote, you know, becoming the, the, the candidate, the nominee for the, for the Democratic Party. That on its own had its dynamics within the Democratic Party. Hence, if you notice, um, you know, it's very star-studded uh, kind mm. of campaign, but they're still having issues around black men. And this is why your President Obama and, 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 and the wife, Michelle, they seem to be messaging that. So you've got a very star-studded, but you need people. You, you need a lot of people voting for her to, to so it's not enough to have, you know, celebrities endorsing. Of course, they've got their value, they bring money, they bring their power. There's no doubt about that. But you're right also. There's also some discrepancies and also some differences in terms of policies. I mean, if you look at Harris, Harris is stronger on reproduction rights, mm. um, abortion, especially at the backdrop of rule versus Wade. But then there are issues in Gaza, the conflict in the Middle East. She's coming very, uh, you know, vague, to say the least. She's not convincing. I mean, I've been following her on, on those kind of policies. I was in, I'm not entirely convinced she's on top of the ball. And those matters are important. Of course, if you are hearing from the different clips you are playing from Europe, she doesn't come across as a sturdy hand, but the advantage, she comes from the backdrop of your Biden, who's been there for a long time. Then you've got your Trump, who's seen by Americans that she, he will stabilize the economy. And also issues of immigration, which are incredibly important to Americans, Trump is seen. But there's also a view, not only in the United States, in some parts of the world, uh, you know, perhaps you're put in amongst others, thinking that uh, a Trump will be good to maybe find resolutions in the conflicts and the wars, especially in the Middle East and also um, in, 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 you know, the, the Palestine one and, and Ukraine and Russia. So it's, it's, it's that mixed book. As a result, Harris not only leads, but fundamentals of the race are still up in the air. So you can't rule out a Trump upset, no. Can you rule out a Harris win? So we will only know, uh, I guess, Tuesday night? 
Hmm. I mean, it was Trump who did say at one of his rallies that had he been president, um, Russia and Ukraine invasion would never have happened and what we're seeing, the escalation in the Middle East would never have happened either. But I want to talk about yeah. what happens at the 11th hour when um, these candidates are campaigning and how the messaging seems to si slightly change. On immigration, that's the hot topic, particularly for Trump. He's been harboring on this topic, saying things like, you know, they have the most porous borders and the worst of the worst in other countries come to the United States of America. But now in his recent rally, he took a bit of a, a different stance and he said that they want people to come into the country. They do. He does want that. Um, but they want them to come in legally through a system and they have to love us. They have to love our country. Slightly different stance. Yeah. He's still talking about, of course, immigration, but then distinguishing between you know, of course, globalization and immigration and illegal immigration and not so much name calling. Yes. I mean, Trump is Trump. He's, he's unconventional. He loves hyperboles and, mm. he, you know, he says things he thinks that he wants to say. And I guess if you're a, a Trump a, a strategist or, 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 or Republican strategist, it must be difficult to manage it. But also you must remember the toning down is also a strategic one. Perhaps uh, uh, those who are coming from the Republican Party, especially those who are Republican strategists, must be saying, especially at the backdrop of Madison Square comment, mm. that really has upset the Latino you know, a, a, you know, group of people. So you can't afford to lose that demographic. So it, it, there must have been behind the scenes conversations that that you need to tone down, show a more embracing kind of message because uh, um, your counterpart, uh, Harris, is trying to show that. Although, I mean, if you want to critique Harris, Harris is embracing in words, but there isn't substantive um, kind of policy that she's putting on, on the table when it comes to immigration. But it's it's a, a few days uh, a messaging critical, bring it home kind of messaging. What are the kind of things? Because remember, voting in, in any country, especially in the United States, for various reasons, is highly emotional. So you can't be seen. They must have told him to be uh, exclusionary. You must embrace because you need every vote, mm. every vote, especially that particular state, the Shapiro state, because remember, that state is critical. It has got 19 electoral votes. So you can't lose it because you've made a comment or one of your speakers made a comment and you don't want to disavow that comment and you have offended a Latino. So so, so I, it must have been a serious conversation. So it's it's serious uh, um, uh, uh, electioneering strategy, which, which is important to do whether he wins or not. We will see all of us on on Tuesday. But here is uh, to come to her. She's got an advantage of this star studdedness, the Obamas. I mean, mm. your Michelle Obama and this kind of thing. So she's got that advantage. Of course, she's a woman and uh, of color. Although, although Trump had many things to say that she only realized, he only realized later that he was black or those kind of things. But she's a woman of color. So there's something symbolic about her, her election. And if she she goes to the White House. She gets votes to servant to take care to the White House. No one can take away the symbolism of it. But you need much more. You really need much more. And she's going to be challenged if she wins, especially in the global stage. I mean, there's so much work to do there. Your Jinping, they must be watching mm. this India and I mean Europe and NATO, all interested parties. Of course, all of us. Uh, because of the uh, role the United space States play in global politics. Certainly the world is watching with bated breath to see the outcome of those elections. Dr. Telela Netani Vika, thank you so much for joining us this evening and sharing your insights with us.